This has turned into a nice little spot here since we've had a bit of rain. Nice clear water. A bit of a waterfall over there. Last time we were here it was dry as. You probably remember we were throwing rocks down here <laughs> into the water. Oh, it looks beautiful now. Uh, sorry about that uh, little distraction there. <laughs> now we'll resume our normal programming. Welcome to our camping gear video, guys. And of course, the lovely Natalie is back for her first proper ride since breaking the little wristy wrist and getting straight into it, fully loaded. This could be a long one. It's going to be pretty comprehensive. Uh, all the stuff we've got, we're heading out for a camp and when we set up, we're going to go, go through all the stuff that we're carrying and, and all that crap. Uh, the first test is going to be the saddlebags i've gone totally rackless on the t7 at the moment i don't have any rack on their back at all i've just got the duffel tied on with the uh, tie down points actually added a couple of little tie down points myself here on the bnb tail tidy and i've got the nelson rig jaw sport saddlebags which just sit on the on the side there without any rack this one here is a little bit close to the exhaust but so far it's been fine and uh nat's running the same same setup got the osr 40 litre dry bags on both and the rig uh, saddlebags. That's got the little uh, Nelson Rig Hurricane Enduro tank bag on there today. And I've got my favourite uh, Nelson Rig Trails and tank bag. Uh, so if we make it to camp and we start setting up, we'll come back to you um, as we're unloading everything and go through it all. Alright, we have arrived at camp on Benny's private property. Thanks for letting us have a camp here, mate. You're awesome. Not a bad spot here to sink a few coldies, I reckon. All right, we'll um, unpack the bikes one at a time and show you how we've got it set up. We're not saying that we're experts at this, far from it. We're very new to this game, but we just want to show you guys what we've done. And maybe you'll get some ideas. Maybe you'll have some tips for us. If we're doing something stupid, leave a comment below and tell us your better way of doing it. For starters, obviously, run the Nelson Rig tank bag up here. That's got the usual stuff, a drink of water, torches and all that important stuff in there, wallets, phones. Running the OSAR 40 litre dry pack with all our clothes and bedding stuff in there. So how did it, did you notice Nat, how the bag was going without the rack? Was it bouncing around no, too I much? No, I didn't notice anything. No, it was like it, it was like it has always been sitting there on a rack. It's pretty solid, eh? Like it's, yeah. It ain't going anywhere. No. So it's just held on with two, two straps which go over the little screws. Very, very simple setup, quick to get off. Matt's still running the gotcha straps on hers. I couldn't run those with with these little tie down points, but this seems to work pretty well. So yeah, these um, ice uh, dry bags have a little air release valve, which is pretty cool for when you're scrunching them down. All right, so on top is clothes, so I can chuck a t-shirt on when we get to camp. All right, so what we're going to do, guys, is get comfortable. So that's my clothes bag. I've got. Gonna get changed. We're both gonna get changed. Um, <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's got the old gotcha straps on the duffel. Good old gotcha straps. Bright salmon in colour. <laughs> Thank you, Marky Mark at Biker Bits for the gotcha straps. Mm. You want me to carry that? You bloody <laughs> wuss. <laughs> you call me a wuss. <laughs> Seinfeld references, love it. Right, might be worth noting guys too that because we're a team and we're camping and riding together, we share the load, so it makes it a lot easier. Obviously we only have one tent between us. Well, you know, we only need one cooker and you know, we share the meal and all that sort of stuff too. Uh, anyway, so all we've done so far is we've got our clothes bag, just camp clothes, our summer camping gear, shorts, t-shirt and thongs. First thing I'm going for right now, 
in here is a luxury item <laughs> which we've never brought before on a camping trip on the bike and that is a little cooler with some cold beers in it check that out eh that's a sight for sore eyes when you're camping on the bikes and you've been riding all day and you're sweaty and dusty and hot oh we didn't bring any coolers Bam. oh dang it's still, oh. <laughs> it's still even a little bit cold <laughs> They're definitely frothy. <laughs> At least they're not going everywhere. No. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so my my bag's got the the domicile, the tent, super cheap auto tarp. I don't remember how big it is, but it's big enough for our tent to go on it anyway. I might just unpack all this stuff first and then we'll set the tent up and everything. Just so you just don't have to watch us set up because that's pretty boring. Um, this is the tent. See, we pack it like Mark, Mark Victor does on Biker Bits, which is freaking awesome. We don't roll it up, pack it up into a little bag. We just stuff it in there. The tent goes in the bag loose. Fly goes in the bag loose. We do fold up the tarp a little bit so it goes in nice. But yeah, it's just easier, especially when you're just packing it all down anyway. And it's, you know, because... Half the time you need to pull it out and dry it out properly when you get home. It's just a hassle folding it all up. This way is much easier. Trust me. Also in here we've got a little baby hammer <laughs> for hammering in pegs. Nat thought that would be a good idea. I thought using a rock would be better. Josh thinks it's ridiculous. <laughs> but it does do the job. Sometimes rocks can be a pain in the ass to hammer pegs with. Especially when you don't have rocks around. True. These are awesome eBay Helenox knockoff chairs. We'll show you these. You would have seen them in one of our other videos already, but we'll give you a better look at them. They cost 30 bucks each, or the pair. 30 bucks each. Okay. Well, the Helenox are more like 100. Yeah. Okay. I think so they're like 200, maybe. That these are just as good. Um, we got one of those each. We do fold up our pillows and our air mattresses. They do pack down pretty well, and it's just easier. We've got a sheet for the floor of the tent because those inflatable sleeping pads are very fucking noisy <laughs> when you're moving around in the night or your other half moves around in the night. Yeah. Got see the Summit sleeping bag in there, just loose, just loosely rolled up. Yeah. And the tent pegs and poles. Now the tent we've got, I'll show you in a minute, but it's a Coleman Ridgeline 3. It's an awesome little tent, easy to set up. It's been pretty good so far, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the only thing I don't like about it, or that we don't like about it, is that you can't move it around when it's set up. It's, it's not freestanding. Um, and it doesn't really have like flip up windows for ventilation. No. You've just got a door and a couple of tiny little flaps. Yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, that's that bag done. Uh, we'll set up the tent and we'll come back to you. Yes, we really do need a fly. Look at the sky, it's going to rain. <laughs> Anyway guys, yeah, this is actually a hiking tent, obviously. I guess most motorcyclists use hiking tents because they're really lightweight um, and compact. Nice uh, lightweight aluminium poles. Piece of piss to set up. We've just got the two poles so far. Threaded through and a peg on each corner, pretty much. Then we just throw the fly over. Usual drill. <laughs> there ain't nothing uh, different from any other tent. It's, it's supposed to be a three-man. It fits two of us comfortably. Plus most of our gear, hey? Yeah. Uh, it seems like good quality though. And uh, we got it on special. I think it was around about 160 bucks on special, this tent. It's a pretty good deal. Normally they're around 220, going by memory. It's got these style pegs too, which are pretty cool. They're really lightweight. They're not, they're not excellent, but they're okay. Right, the tent is up. I thought it was up, she's still fucking around. <laughs> Anyway, we decided to go with inflatable sleeping mats. I, I really generally can't stand air beds, but these are insulated and they're actually really good. They're not cheap. They're, uh, they're Cedar Summit Everlight XT. Again, a tip from <laughs> Mark from Biker Bits. Do you reckon they were a game changer, so we got them? Did I say they're not cheap? Because they're not cheap. Uh, we've got quite a bit of Cedar Summit stuff, and none of it's cheap, but it's um, it's all good good quality gear. It's made in Taiwan, but um, no, it's good stuff. And they come with their own little pump sack in here, so you don't have to 
blow it up with your mouth or bring a separate pump or anything. Uh, and the, the benefit of using the pump sack obviously is you're not filling it up with moisture from your breath and that way it doesn't go all mouldy and stuff. Plus, you know, it doesn't it save you from going all... Plus, of course, it's set... Leapers. <laughs> <laughs> plus, of course, it stops you from going all dizzy when you're puffing and panting into a airbed. Look at these march flies, man. They're huge. Right, so you plug it into the hole, the little bag, you just blow in there. You may think, oh yeah, you're blowing your moisture breath in there anyway, but it's, it's different, trust me. Fill it up, tie it off, force it in, just force it in. Don't worry about what she says, Babe. force it in. <laughs> Alright, anyway, we'll finish pumping these up and get back to you. <laughs> so these are the Cedar Summit Everlight XT mats, and they're all blowed up. Uh, we made it look harder than what it is, but apparently they only take like seven pump sack fulls to inflate them, if you do it properly, when, when you get some practice at it. They're like 10 centimeters thick. You, you, just, you wouldn't think that you'd get a good night's sleep on that, but you can lay on your side, if you're a side sleeper, and your hip won't even touch the ground on those things. No. Even, like, you don't even have to blow them up real hard. I don't know how they do it, but... As I said, we're not sponsored by Cedar Summit, but they make some good shit. I wish they would give us some free stuff. Mm. But no, we slept on them the first night we went camping, and we had the best sleep we have had in a long time. They were really good. They are good. Yeah. Yeah, what else have we got here? I can do the air mattress, but I just can't do an air pillow, so... We got foam core pillows, also Cedar Summit, these are about 40 bucks each. Yeah, that's the uh, Cedar Summit wrap up pillow, thank you darling. That's got a nice purple one. Cedar Summit sleeping bags, of course. What are they called? Trailhead TH3. It says minus 7 degrees, but I wouldn't believe that. I think they're actually more like a minus 1. Comfort rating. When we camped during the winter time here in Queensland, we were only really just warm enough with these. But, you know, they're quality sleeping bags. Mm, they are very nice. Right, so we're going to throw our little sheet inside the tent first, put the mattresses in, sleeping bags and pillows, and... So we'll come back to you once it's all in the tent and we'll show you what it looks like. Yeah. All set up. And then we'll set up the chairs. Ooh, the chairs are cool. Thing off. <laughs> no, you just open that first flap and then. Oh, yeah, 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 if you need to let them down, undo that, push a little valve there. You can fine tune it while you're laying on it, it's pretty cool. Get in there and make my bed. <laughs> so, this is the Chateau La MVDBR <laughs> for tonight. Give you the grand tour. There's that. And that's it. <laughs> so yeah, not a bad little setup. It's going to be a sweaty night tonight, I think. Oh yeah. Like it's already stinking hot in there. It's only getting down to like 21 Celsius tonight. So what I generally like to do is hang my boots over the bike like so. That's that way, if it rains or if there's dew or whatever, it doesn't sog up my shit. Socks is tucked up in there. Plus, um, saves from creepy crawlies getting in there. I still check them anyway. <laughs> Kirby Crawley's no no fucking bounds. Before we set up the chairs, I'll just show you guys what else we carry in the saddlebags and that. Okay, so my left hand saddlebag's got the tools, pretty much all of the tools for fixing the bikes or whatever. Spare tubes, tie levers, pump, tie gauge, zip ties. First aid kit. First aid kits tucked away for easy access here. These um, saddlebags have I won't undo it, but it's a separate little pouch there on the back, both sides. This one's got our water in it. I'll show you that in a minute. That's got that's got all the cooking gear and, and eating stuff in here, which we'll show you again properly later. Uh, this side's just food, isn't it? Yep. So that's the, the munching wagon. A little yeah. food. I need the munch. Toiletries. Um, so Cedar Summit also sell a 
a water bag i can't remember what it's called off the top of my head but it's like a four or five oh, i think they come up to like 10 liters it's like a, a pouch a bladder sort of thing that you know holds water and uh, i sort of researched them a little bit looked into it <laughs> they're nothing but uh, an actual goon bag inside a, a canvas sort of pouch so i made one myself because we drink goon all the time <laughs> so <laughs> show us inside there so you've got a silver pillow and these things are tough as you wouldn't believe it I, you know i could probably stand on that and i wouldn't bust put anything sharp next to it and it's a different story but this is the woolies shopping bag 99 cents at any woolies do a little bit of stitching here a fishing line or dental floss i think it was actually <laughs> cut a little hole there for the, the goon bag and uh you got yourself a four liter water bladder but yeah we've been drinking that today and it uh, doesn't taste like goon anymore not oh, wine sorry you can easily um refill these so that black part there just pops off of the, the white part to refill it and to wash out the, the wine stench <laughs> but yeah and then it's got a little handle to hang up somewhere and you've got yourself some water brilliant idea for do say so myself if you're worried about it busting um it takes up very little weight and space to carry a spare ladder for one of those so yeah, there you go you can just hang it off the bike you can hang it up in the tree if you want little goon goon bag uh, tough on the end of it laughing yeah so we'll set up the chairs now Nat's going to demonstrate how to set up the $30 eBay chair. Yeah. It comes in its own little oh, sorry. cheap canvas case, which yep. is pretty cool. So there's your seat base. Alright, and this is, this is the frame, this is it. It all snaps together with elastic, just like a tent pole. Yep, no tools required, except for the one putting it together. <laughs> Genius. Helenox invest millions coming up with that design and the Chinese knock it off yeah. <laughs> and sell it to us cheap. So it's got some really hard plastic pockets for the, the peg ends, if you want to call them peg ends, chair ends or whatever. And they just sit in there like that. You know the idea the other one? This one's really tight for some reason. I'm not sure why. But it's not that hard when you don't have a broken wrist. Do want to make sure that you get the... That's the bum part, you don't want to be sitting on the, the mesh. But yeah, that's it. And I'll tell you what, not bad. So one good thing about this little tent is it's, it's got a little vestibule area there. It's not very big, but it's big enough to put your boots if you want to and your, you know, your bags and your helmets and all that stuff without having to put them inside the tent with you. Still got a, bit of, a fair bit of sunlight left, so we're going to Go down to the edge of the cliff over here and suck on a few coldies and listen to some music. Not bad, eh? <laughs> we'll come back to you when we're getting dinner ready and show you our cool cooking gear. Yeah. There's 11, Barry. <laughs> right, we decided to cook down by the, the view tonight. I don't think we're going to have a fire. We may have a fire later, but we probably won't have a fire. But anyway, <laughs> this is our entire cooking setup, guys. Starting over here, we've got the uh, butane gas for the little cooker thingy. This is our pot with everything in it. Uh, some plastic bowls. We just use bowls for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, pretty much. Uh, this is a windshield for the cooker and this is our little table i'll show you the table first we'll get that going this was cheap as on aliexpress i think it was about 15 dollars mm. it's so freaking it's light it weighs i don't know what it weighs but it weighs nothing i can balance it on my finger it's flimsy as it's thin aluminium but it's it's lightweight it just folds out like that and there's your tabletop and then you've got uh, these little things that fold out. And so what happens is you put that one over to there. This one goes over to there. And then you fold up the leg tees like this. And you get yourself a little table there. How cool is that? Don't get much light lighter than that. Lighter weight than that. <laughs> and then you just need some level ground to put it on. <laughs> That's pretty all right there. Yeah. Very basic. It's just a fold-out aluminium shield. Keeps the wind off your cooker. So you can stick it into the ground with these little pegs, but 
I'm just going to let the wind blow it around. <laughs> anyway, before we use that, I'll show you what's in here. Well, it's all in there. And it's all covered in milk. We had a bit of a leak. Ugh, it smells like baby vomit. Does not. Okay, so initially, guys, we we bought an aluminium cook set, and it was all right. It worked well, didn't it? Like yes. it's not, It was non-stick and everything. It was good, lightweight. But I won't say what brand it was because I can't remember mostly. But it came apart like the the lip of the the lip of the um, the pot came away from the, the rest of it, and it, yeah, you know. We got it from Snowy's and they gave us a refund for it and um, that was great but we thought bugger it, we'll just get some stainless stuff this time. We just got the pot, we don't we don't use a frying pan, we just got the we cook meat and stuff in this. Uh, so it's a Cedar Summit, this one a stainless Cedar Summit Sigma pot 2.7 litre. And uh, yeah we've used this a couple of times, it's pretty good. So yeah it, it's got the, it's got a silicon coated handle which folds in there and clicks onto the lid, holds the lid on. It doesn't hold it on really well, but um, yeah, it works. And then when you pull it around, it clicks in, and then you lock it into place, a little plastic thingy, and, and you've got a handle. And it's got a little silicon thing for the lid. Put that on the side of the thing. Ah, so uh, that's you... what that is, yeah. It's got a little tab there, so you can hook it on the, on the side of the pot, which is pretty handy. Um, okay, so what's in there? What's in there? Our little gauze mat helps shit not to burn when you're cooking on gas. We've got a sponge for washing up. Uh, we've got our little gas cooker, which we got from Biker Bits. Cool. We've got coffee and sugar and tea bags and little bottles and stuff. Cutlery, a little bottle of oil. These are actually Plax bottles from the supermarket, little travel Plax bottles. <laughs> I want to explain what that is. Plax is mouthwash. <laughs> um, dishwashing liquid in that one. Unfortunately, they're exactly the same colour, so <laughs> you actually need to read what's on there before you try and use it for its intended purpose. And yeah, oh, and of course, a carbon fibre lighter. Because we took the little clicky thing off this, it was broken anyway. Anyway, um, <laughs> got a tea towel, which is handy, obviously. And we've just got some hiking stainless cutlery, lightweight knives, spoons and forks, and some Viker bits mini tongs, and a wooden spoon. Now this is actually a repair thing for the tent, um, if one of the poles breaks I think you can repair it with a, this bit of pot, but it actually doubles as a handle extension for our wooden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. Got a full length handle and a wooden spoon. So yeah, that's our that's our cooking setup, guys. Pretty uh, pretty good. It works well. Uh, obviously, gas cooker is uh, sweet. These gas butane gas canisters are cheap as. Uh, this little thing just folds out. Let's see. Well, it's quite windy here at the moment. You really need that windshield or else all the heat just blows away and this shit takes forever to heat up. Um, oh yeah, the little legs fold out on this. <laughs> We've actually got a tin of uh, corned beef that we don't have a can opener for because <laughs> the last time we had a can of that stuff, was it a different brand? No, same brand, but it was a smaller tin and it uh, had a little self... had a pull tab on it. Self pulling tab like these ones do. So we're going to try and get into a can. Yeah. So we're going to go hunting for a knife. We've got our little O-light O-bulb too, just for when it starts getting dark. This little thing's awesome. Look at the size of it. It's uh, not dark enough to need it yet, but that's on low power. Hold the button down, it goes on to high power. That gives you heaps of light. Matt's got a headlight on. Turn the camera around. <laughs> She's got her O-Light Parent 2 headlight on, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Something I forgot to mention when I've been talking about um, the O-Light gear too, a lot of it has a lockout feature, so when you're transporting it, like I keep this in my tank bag or whatever, you don't want it accidentally coming on and, and the battery going flat. Oh, I forgot you that time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 
what you can do is hold down the button until it goes on and then back off again and it locks it out so you can't turn it on. It will come on while it's pressed but um, yeah it locks it out and then you just hold it down again until it comes on. Cool. The same with the, uh, the little warrior mini that I keep in my pocket. <laughs> um, yeah so if you don't want it coming on while you're while it's stored hold the button down there you go and it won't do anything so you hold it down again and then we're back in business anyway yeah can't wait to test this little fellow out tonight it's our first time camping with the o-light torches and i think they're going to be awesome anyway let's go get this can open <laughs> It's not going to be fun. I think we'll probably try and video it. The moto chick's insisting on doing it herself. She's going to freaking cut herself, I reckon. Here, yeah, let a boy have a go. Don't you dare give me that <laughs> shit. <sighs> this knife will never cut again. <laughs> ah, piss off! <laughs> he's raging because he's getting bitten by marchies. <laughs> Slicing through it like butter. Oh yeah. Oh, oh you're the best. We can eat. Woohoo! <laughs> Look at that goon bag in action. Ah, ants! Oh, oh fucking hell! <laughs> <girl. laughs> That's what I'm going on. <laughs> we haven't actually used this windshield with the table. Actually, it's the first time we've used the table too. It doesn't really sit on there, obviously, but um, it's fine. It'd be good if we were on level ground, I think. But it's a bit of a slope here. Hunting for firewood with the A-Light Warrior Mini. That's, that's on power saving mode if I crank it on to bright. <laughs> oh yeah. Spot firewood from 10 miles. Well, we weren't going to have a fire, but we got a nice little one going, just to keep the bloody bugs away. Little A-bulbs just sitting over here, keeping a little light on for us, over near the bikes. You see how much it lights up on high power. You know, it's, it lights up pretty well. Good enough to cook by and do shit. And then, you know, it's got red mode as well. <laughs> and a flashing red mode. But just like on night light mode, it's pretty cool. Just gives you a little bit of light to see by. And stick it to the bike stick it to whatever and it'll run for like 50 hours or something like that on on that low power mode so survived the night wasn't a great sleep but not a bad view to wake up to morning coffee game bag in the tree <laughs> the water on the boil Did you have a good sleep nap no. Not really. It's a lot of noisy birds around here yeah. that squark all night. Look at that, eh? Not bad. March flies are starting up. As soon as it got light this morning, they were buzzing around the tent trying to get a feed on us. So far they haven't found us out here. It won't be long. So if you've been watching our camping trips so far, yeah, so that was our fourth night in total in the tent, and it rained again. <laughs> so that's four nights in the tent, four nights of rain. <laughs> but like, it was only a few light showers, it wasn't much, but still, <laughs> it's funny. 